It's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France. And we've got Florence Villemonet with us here on the set. Hi, Flo. Hi, Jeannie. Now, this week, you are focusing on a very important stage in the life of French people here. It's passing the end of the high school exams. Now, this is called the baccalaureate, or the BAC, as it's known here. And the exam session just wrapped up this week. That's right. Sitting the baccalaureate is hands down one of the most stressful things you do as a French teenager. Uh, it happens at the end of your final year of high school. Uh, and this year is called Terminal, so you can imagine it's quite a, an ominous thing. You're about 18 years old. Uh, it's a real rite of passage that really sets the course for the rest of your life because uh, without the back, you can't really go to university, and it's really hard to get a job. Now, a lot of French people call it a national monument because uh, it's been around for a really long time, over 200 years, in fact. Uh, it was created by Napoleon uh, in 1808, and it's really uh, withheld the test of time. It's been occasionally postponed but never canceled, and this despite two world wars and the uh, social uprising of May 1968. Let's take a listen. During the war, I lived in a town that was being bombed. All the students who were taking the back got extra points if they helped clear the rubble. During May 68, just about everybody passed the exam. It was exceptionally just an oral exam, so just a formality, really. Now, for lots of countries have national qualification exams. You might be familiar with the SATs in the U.S. or the A-levels in the U.K. There's the same thing in Germany, in Italy. But the BAC is considered to be particularly tough. That's right. And French people love to brag about how hard the BAC is because it implies that French kids are really smart. Uh, there are three kinds of baccalaureates. There's, a, first of all, the professional baccalaureate, which focuses on a special trade like carpentry and baking. The technological baccalaureate focuses on science and computers. And the general baccalaureate. Now, students that take the general baccalaureate, choose one of three filières or tracks. You have S, which focuses on sciences and math, uh, ES, that's uh, econ the economy and social sciences, and then L, which focuses on literature, the humanities, and art. And what's interesting is there's kind of an unsaid hierarchy between these different filières. S is seen as being the most prestigious one. Uh, ES is also pretty tough, but not really for the nerds. And then the L baccalaureate is sometimes said to be for the slackers. That's an <laughs> Exaggeration, of course, but that's the uh, one I would have chosen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now you have to choose really wisely because in France you're really put on an academic and professional track, and it's really hard to jump tracks uh, down the road. And so it's a really tough choice. You essentially have to choose what you want to do when you grow up when you're just 16 years old. Now, regardless of the track or the series that you choose, you are still tested on a wide range of subjects. That's right. It's pretty intense, and it puts a really heavy workload on French students because you're tested on classic core topics like math and science and history and the French language, uh, but you're also tested on things like literature, uh, philosophy, and sports. You have to do a sports exam, which is pretty interesting. The idea is for kids to have a high level of what's called culture générale, essentially general culture, to be well-rounded individuals. Now, the majority of these BAC exams take place in June, and the whole country tunes in to find out what the questions are about. That's right. People discuss these questions among themselves, particularly the philosophy uh, exam, which is traditionally the first exam to kick off the back season. And this year, check out the questions. They were clearly tied to the current events we're going through. You can see here, does working less lead to a better life? <laughs> Do we always know what we want? And can we always justify our beliefs? So lots of people have been discussing these things over the past couple of days. Now, as you can imagine, after so much stress of preparing the back, result day is a real day for celebration. It's right around the beginning of July. You can check out these people <laughs> celebrating. And now the pass mark is 10 out of 20 points. You're graded out of 20 points. And there are all sorts of distinctions you can get. And French people are particularly obsessed with these distinctions. Check them out. Between 12 and 14, uh, you get mention assez bien, that's honors. Uh, between 14 and 16, mention bien, high honors. And over 16, you get Mention très bien, highest honors. And, and you can also get the uh, félicitations du jury, that's exact, essentially congratulations from the people that were marking the exams. And this can open a whole lot of doors. And, and if you don't pass, don't worry, because there is a reset uh, exam in the summertime that's called the rattrapage. Now, the back also has its critics, and not just from the students who are sitting these very difficult exams. Uh, some people say that it's actually lost its value over time. That's right. People say it's lost its value because 
so many people take the baccalaureate. Check out the, the, the figures here. In 1948, you had 30,000 people, and these days it's nearly 70,000 people. That's about 80% of, uh, of an age group. 700,000 people. 700,000. <laughs> That's right. That's even more, right? Now, uh, more and put more people take the exam, and more and more people obtain the exam. They pass the exam. The success rate in the 1960s was about 60%. And these days, check it out, it's it's almost 90%. So it's almost a, a 100% success rate. And so a lot of people say, you know, what's the value in it? And also, it doesn't guarantee you get a job these days. Let's listen to one critic. It's a problem if everyone gets it. It no longer means anything. These days you can't get a job with the BAC alone. The skills the BAC evaluates are purely academic. They aren't skills you're actually going to use in the professional world. Now the results come out July 5th. In the meantime, the teachers are busy correcting papers right now, and sometimes they land on some truly interesting answers. That's right. Just as French people love to discuss the questions, they also love to discuss the uh, worst answers and maybe laugh about them. And in fact, there's an expression in French. It's our word du jour. It's called the perle du bac, a pearl of the baccalaureate, quite literally, kind of a gem. Uh, but it's essentially the best of the worst mistakes people make on the baccalaureate. Each year, there's a good crop. Uh, for instance, a recent example was a guy on a, on a math exam who answered, you know, the question was, what's a polygon? And he said, a man with several wives. <laughs> Clearly not really a math answer there. Now, sometimes a whole bunch of students fall for the same trick question. Like this year, uh, there was one question on an English exam uh, that really didn't go down well. Kids had to uh, read a text, and then one of, the, one of the questions on the text was, where is Manhattan? And a whole bunch of people had a really hard time answering that question. In fact, 13,000 people signed a petition asking for the question to be removed. So I guess they're going to have to wait until result day uh, to find out whether or not they were penalized. It could be the best day of your life or the worst day. That's too bad. That Manhattan question is probably the only one I'd get right <laughs> on a back exam. Florence Villeneuve, thank you so much for that latest French Connections. Now, don't forget, if you have any questions you'd like us to answer, any things you're curious about, be sure to tweet us uh, at Flo Villeneuve and be sure to check out previous shows on our website that address, of course, France24.com.